I think the, the greatest challenge we face in education nationally is making sure that we can attract the very best people to be teachers. In some of the most uh, advanced uh, education systems around the world, such as in uh, Finland and, uh, and, and Singapore, uh, South Korea, some of the very best and brightest uh, go into teaching. And we have not made it as attractive in our country for in some jurisdictions to go into teaching. Uh, compensation isn't very attractive, starting compensation, advancement and opportunity is not as people had hoped. And, uh, and so attracting the very best people into teaching is the single most important thing you can do for education. Each state pursues what it thinks is the best path. Um, I served as, uh, as governor of another state, as you know. Uh, Massachusetts has the highest ranked K through 12 schools in the country and uh, over 150 colleges and universities. And the key to our success there was measuring the success of our students. Uh, if a school was uh, unsuccessful in preparing students for uh, the next level, the next grade level, uh, the state was able to step in and take over the administration of the school. And we made a great effort in hiring the very best teachers. So yeah, you start with uh, compensation for, particularly for starting salaries for teachers. I spent uh, 10 years living in, in Utah. I uh, came to go to school here and during my college years, of course, came back and uh, had the experience of being part of the Olympic team. And after my career was over, my wife and I made uh, Utah our home. We decided this is the place we would live. Uh, we were a bit surprised when Orrin Hatch said he wasn't going to run for re-election. He had asked me to endorse him. and I told him I would, uh, but he encouraged me to run for Senate. And I think by virtue of the relationships I have with uh, the White House, with the president, as well as with some 40 senators who I've campaigned with, uh, I have the capacity to do more for Utah than the average junior senator. So uh, uh, this, uh, this represents, I think, an opportunity for, uh, for me to do my very best to represent our state. President uh, Trump has followed pretty much the, the kind of mainstream Republican agenda, which I described during my campaign, and uh, that's during his first year. And, uh, and so I support the lower taxes he put in place and the effort to deregulate and to push back against gov government overreach. Um, on the other hand, if he says something or does something that I think is divisive or, 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 or minimizes uh, minority communities or immigrant communities in our country, then I will do what I've done in the past, which is I'll speak my mind. I call them like I see them. And uh, the president, I think, respects people who uh, express their views openly. And uh, we'll, we'll continue to have a good working relationship if I'm lucky enough to become senator. Well, Utah is doing pretty well on a whole host of fronts. So Utah, for instance, balances its budget. Washington doesn't. I'd like to see that change. Utah exports more than imports. Washington, or the nation, they don't get that done right. Utah has had the fastest growing uh, em uh, employment in the country. Uh, that's something Washington could learn from. Was uh, Utah has seen median wages go up. Washington could learn about how to get wages up. And so those kinds of values, I think, are appropriate for Washington. And then there's some others. Uh, uh, Utah welcomes people who come here illegally from other countries, immigrants. And, and I think that, that spirit of welcoming people who choose to make America their home is, is a Utah value that Washington could use. And uh, I, I'd say finally, and there's a long list, but finally, I'd note that uh, Republicans and Democrats get along on Capitol Hill in Utah, and not so well in Washington. And I hope to be able to reach across the aisle in the way that is uh, reminiscent of the values here in our state. I don't support new federal legislation, new federal gun legislation. I haven't seen any that would have prevented the terrible attacks that have occurred. There are a couple of exceptions. One, I think bump stocks should be taken off the market. And two, I think the federal government can provide a much better service in background checks to make sure that people who are mentally disturbed and present a threat to themselves and to others are not purchasing weapons. But most gun legislation and school safety legislation I think should be uh, created at the state level. And you're right, in fact, I did that uh, when I served as a governor uh, in the place I used to live, Massachusetts. But I believe the best course for our schools here in Utah is for counties and the state to take action that we believe is best for our own students.
You know, I think the level of student involvement and activity with regards to school safety is totally appropriate and laudable. That doesn't mean I agree with everything every student says by any means, uh, but I think having more young people recognize the decisions are being made that affects their safety, their livelihood, and their freedom, that's a good thing. When I ran for president in 2012, I did not support the DREAM Act as it was written, uh, but I didn't win. And President Obama made representations to DACA uh, young people uh, that they have relied upon. Uh, so I believe that those people uh, should be able to stay in the country legally as the president, as President Trump has proposed. Um, in terms of a pathway to citizenship, I don't believe in a special pathway. I mean, though, I believe that they uh, should get in line like everybody else. And if they have the skills and experience and merit to become a U.S. citizen, then they could uh, ultimately reach that objective. Ah, the border wall. Yes, I support uh, de securing our border, uh, as well as something known as E-Verify, a system where employers can find out easily whether someone is legal or not. And if they're not legal, then I would sanction employers for hiring people who are not here legally. I had nothing other than the wall, fence, technology, drones, all the different technology you'd use to protect our border. But ultimately, you realize that many, many of the people who come here and stay here illegally uh, came here illegally in the first place. They had a temporary visa, a tourist visa. And in order to really secure the border, we, not we don't just need uh, a physical uh, border, but we also need a, a system to identify those that are here illegally and make sure they don't take American jobs. You know, I have learned, having served in a state where my legislature was over, overwhelmingly Democrat, that, uh, that to get something done of a lasting nature, you have to reach across the aisle and see if there's common ground to be found. Oftentimes there's not, and you just can't get something done. But most of the time, you can find some way to reach agreement. And I think we need more of that in Washington. It, it happens here in Utah. The legislature, Republican, Democrat, and the governor get along. They get along personally, and they're able to find enough common ground that Utah actually takes some pretty meaningful steps uh, every year in a pretty short legislative season. And, and I'd like to be able to apply that kind of approach to Washington. Well, no one can really fill Senator Hatch's shoes. Uh, not only are they big shoes, but they've been there a long time, yeah. and they have a lot of clout in Washington. Uh, I hope that by virtue of the relationships I have in Washington, that I will be able to accomplish more than, than might the uh, average incoming uh, freshman senator. Uh, at, at the same time, Senator Hatch and I see pretty much eye to eye on most issues. I don't know that I've gone through every single issue that he um, has taken a position on, but we're pretty similar. Uh, that's why I uh, endorsed him in the past and would have endorsed him for his reelection. And then there are, of course, Utah-specific issues where he has really taken the lead like pushing back on the federal overreach on Bears Ears and uh, the Grand Staircase. I, I think that was the right action for him to take. And he's been very helpful in securing research funding for Utah State University, as well as other institutions of higher learning in the state. Those are things I would see as a big part of the job of a United States Senator from Utah. Well, I'm doing my best to encourage people to come to the caucuses to run as a delegate in the Republican convention and ultimately to help me secure the nomination as the Republican nominee for United States Senate from Utah. I met with county officials and the mayor of Logan this morning, uh, and then I had the chance to uh, teach a class, a political science class, where we talked about uh, matters relating to Washington and Utah, and I also met with the university president, and we spent some time talking about uh, USU's involvement throughout rural Utah, as well as right here in this campus. And then uh, I got the chance to come meet with a lot of students. I don't know how many hands I shook and how many pictures I took, but it had to be in the hundreds. I divided the uh, discussion between sort of two things. One was uh, issues that are Utah specific. Uh, by and large specific, meaning uh, Utah lands and how the federal government deals with Utah lands, agriculture issues, 
uh, immigration as it relates to temporary workers coming in and working on farms and, and dairies in Utah as, as are needed, uh, economic development for Utah, education issues for the state. So those, those issues. And then at the federal level, we talked about everything from the size of the federal debt to uh, global warming to uh, poverty, education, so the whole, uh, whole run of issues.